Well, lots of the conversation and really interest around the Acolyte has really stemmed from things that happened outside the show. As the show was not received very well, and Disney has already said they're not doing a season two of it, the drama around the show is continuing. As it turns out, it looks like Disney spent even more money on the Acolyte than they originally had said. And, and again, this is another reason why this show is not getting renewed. So we have an article here from Forbes, from Caroline Reed that we're going to read through and give some thoughts on. So hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And the headline again here from Forbes is Disney reveals Star Wars show The Acolyte was over budget at $230 million. Now, initially, it was said that this show cost $180 million, which was still over budget. Now you're talking about uh, another $50 million on top of it in terms of the cost of it. But uh, it says Disney has revealed that its controversial Star Wars streaming show, The Acolyte, came in over the production budget with its cost hitting $230 million when it was only part of the way through production. It couldn't be much different to the outlook before shooting began in October 2022, as the previous month, Disney confirmed that the eight-episode show was forecasted to be in line with the production budget. The failure to stick to its budget was the final nail in the coffin of the show, which was review bombed by detractors who complained it was woke. I I hate this whole review bomb thing. It wasn't review bomb. People just didn't like it, and the ratings showed it. I, it this is a really tiresome thing that you see people putting out here, especially it seems that it only happens apparently to Star Wars and Disney properties as something gets review bombed. And it's just the fact that people don't like it. They leave a review and they don't like it. That means it's review bomb. So I hate that argument. And then they really go on at the end here to really nullifies the argument they just made before because it says its audience dwindled soon after it debuted in June this year. And just over a month after it ended in July, the plans for a second season were canceled. Okay, was it review bombed or was it just not a good show? And nobody watched it. It's easy to correlate the two together. Nobody watched it or the audience fell off because they were interested. And then the reviews were not good. That's not review bombing. That's just watching a show and not enjoying it. Uh, the Acolyte had a dramatic fall from grace following a strong debut when its first two episodes generated 4.8 million views on launch day, making it the biggest series premiere on Disney Plus this year, according to Deadline. This earned its seventh place on the Nielsen's Top 10 Originals chart in its premiere week with 488 million minutes viewed. It climbed one spot in the second week, but was booted out of the list in the third following an online backlash to the show driven by complaints about its quality and the diversity of its cast. The complaints about the show were that it was bad. I mean, I'm sure there were people that were complaining about certain things. It's it's the internet. You're going to find complaints about just about anything if you go looking for it. Uh, set around 100 years before the events of the much derided Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, the Acolyte sees a former Jedi apprentice reuniting with her master to investigate a series of crimes. Black and international actors dominated the show's ranks, leading to its dubbed the most inclusive live action Star Wars project ever. Well, maybe that's why some people were apprehensive about this show to begin with, because the advertising and the marketing for this show was not that it was a great story or you're going to learn so much cool information. They led with the fact that it was female led or diversity led or things like that. And a nobody really cares about that. But when you lead with these things and not the story, which we have seen this pattern repeat over and over again, where the story is second or third place, or maybe even fourth place compared to other things they want to talk about when it comes to the show, whether it's a message or the cast or whatever it is. And the story is not the center focus. The shows will suffer because that's not what the, entire crew or what the writing of it is pertaining to and the audiences have learned this so when they hear this in the marketing and the advertising they immediately ears perk up and go that's not good not again not that anybody cares about a cast member being a certain race or gender or whatever it's just the fact that that is the central focus of it and then you have to like it and if you don't like it you're review bombing it or you're a bad person or you can you know, it's the internet. You can figure out the rest of that. Uh, then they go talk about Rebecca Henderson, who is the wife of Leslie Hedlund, said she admitted that the show's approach to diversity was deliberate, even extending to the behavior of the characters, uh, with Quimir being shown cooking and wearing feminine clothing despite being a villain. It's so wildly intentional that I don't know what to say. Okay. The diversity of its lineup led to the show being branded woke, which was supposedly the driving force behind its plummeting ratings on review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes. Just a day after it launched on June 4th, its audience score stood at 50%, 
but was then even darker clouds began to gather. Overwhelmingly negative reviews flooded the leaving in leaving the Acolyte with a score of just 18%, which is lower than the critically panned Star Wars The Clone Wars and the notorious 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. Okay, well, I guess I the argument I would make is, A, is the Star Wars special good? No, but it's it's just bad. It's not that it's trying to push any message on people or be preachy. It just wasn't good. It was just a thing that was on TV one time, and it wasn't received well. The Clone Wars, I mean, again, it's just some people didn't like the show, but they weren't pushing an overriding message. Like, they clearly, even, even the paragraph before she's going up, the actors and actresses are like, yeah, it's really obvious what we're doing here. You don't think that the audience, again, for this audience of Star Wars, they want a, a movie or a show or a story about Star Wars. The low score has been attributed to unjustified review bombing. How is it unjustified for people leaving negative reviews about a show they don't like? The whole review bombing aspect just comes from Disney because they don't like it. Uh, with the key evidence being the fact that the show's Rotten Tomatoes critics score stand at a more respectable 78%. However, closely reading the reviews and some of the most prestigious print titles reveal serious structural problems with the show. So you're telling me that critics like something and the audience doesn't, and this is news? There's numerous examples you can see of this where critics praise something and the audiences don't like it, and vice versa. I mean, Adam Sandler movies continually will get high audience scores and critics pan it like crazy. Is that review bombing by critics? Like, it only goes one way. If a show gets bad ratings and somehow the media or the critics like it and they like the messaging of it, then if you don't like it, you're X, Y, and Z and you're review bombing. I am legitimately sick and tired of this argument. It is a tired argument that, and obviously, the ratings show that people were not watching the show. So instead of fighting with your audience and claiming them to be these, these phobes and istophobes and all this stuff like that and saying, oh, you're review bombing the show, why don't you then listen to the audience about what they want? Because guess what doesn't get review bombed? Good shows. House of the Dragon, I don't believe that got review bombed. Like there's numerous shows you can point to that have diverse casts that don't get review bombed. So I get really confused, especially when it comes to Disney, why it is only some of their things that get review bombed. Meanwhile, Black Panther wasn't review bombed and a lot of other shows that have, a, again, a diverse cast of people. Maybe it's just the fact that your show is not any good. Most of the pieces are uneven at best, if not simply underwhelming, said Rolling Stone, uh, whilst USA Today added that the show is full of logical fallacies, hokey dialogue, and nonsensical plots. I don't know what argument this article is making. I really don't. That's a charge that can perhaps be leveled at the best movies in the Star Wars saga, but the other key criticisms certainly can't. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! The Times of London scored the Acolyte 2 out of 5, driven by the show's somber expo expositional dialogue, whilst the New York Times said that beneath the familiar trappings, the visceral pull that Star Wars can summon in is its best moments doesn't manifest itself. Characters speak in platitudes about loss, grief, loyalty, uh, and revenge, and the cast mostly works down to the level of the dialogue. It was far from a dream ticket, even though the show ticketed ticked the diversity box and this wasn't lost on Disney's chief executive, Bob Iger, talking about Disney's productions in general at the New York Times Deal Book Summit in November last year. Iger said that its creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be. He added, we have to entertain first. It's not about messages. Shocking. Clearly agitated by this, Iger didn't stop there and told CNBC in April that infusing messages is not what we're up to. Surprisingly, the messaging didn't run deep in the acolyte. What? That she just quoted one of the actors in the show saying that it was blatant what they were doing. And now she's claiming that the messaging didn't run deep in the acolyte. Again, I'm very confused by this article. As we revealed that despite supposedly being a showcase for diversity, just 30% of the employees working on the show on April 5th, 2023 were female. And across the entire workforce, women average... Er what? Audiences saw through the message, and although the Acolyte returned to Nielsen Top 10 after the release of the finale, it occupied the bottom slot with 335 million minutes of viewing, which Deadline said was the lowest for a Star Wars series finale. Wait, so now we're going into people that worked on the show. Audiences don't know the people that worked on the show or the pay. That is an issue you take up with a union or whoever's running the studio. Nobody's review bombing a show because they learn about the diversity of people who worked on the show.
Just over a month later, Disney put the brakes on a second series, which anti-woke activists saw as a success. In fact, their criticism was far from the only disturbance in the force. Development of the Acolyte began in 2021 at the height of the battle between Disney and Netflix for the t- title of the world's biggest streaming platform. As Disney Plus subscriber numbers surged during lockdown, the Mouse commissioned a slew of costly content to tempt more people to sign up. It fueled $11.4 billion of losses at Disney's direct-to-consumer division, and Iger was powerless to stop it as he was sitting at home in retirement. He was never retired. He was a chairman of the board. After he was tempted back to... Tempted? <laughs> he never left. Oh, jeez. After he was tempted back to the driving seat in November 2022, he told investors that the studio needs to reduce costs on everything that we make because while we are extremely proud of what's on the screen, it's gotten to the point where it's extraordinarily expensive. The Acolyte was no exception. They were not proud of the Acolyte. Let's be honest about this. Budgets of television shows are usually a closely guarded secret as studios tend to absorb the cost of individual programs and their overall expenses. Ones which are filmed in the United Kingdom are exceptions, and that includes the Acolyte. Uh, Studios film in the UK to benefit from the government's audiovisual expenditure credit, uh, which gives them a cash reimbursement of up to 25.5% of the money they spend in the country. To qualify for the reimbursement, at least 10% of core production costs need to relate to activities in the UK. Um, blah, blah, blah. The companies usually have code names so they don't raise attention with fans when filming, when filing for permits to film on location. The latest financial statements for the Acolyte, it's dubbed the Blue Stockings, but it's the Acolyte on Tuesday uh, to cover the year to September 24th, 2023, which is nearly four months after filming wrapped. The Acolyte was released almost exactly a year after the end of filming. So post-production was still underway when the financial statements were drafted. This means that the cost could still soar in the next set of filings, especially as the show is VFX heavy with Jedi battles aplenty. The 230 million spent on the show have been wildly misreported, even with industry outlets wrongly claiming that it costs $180 to make. Two experts who got it right were the news site that Park Place, hey, shout out to the Park Place, and entertainment industry pundit Valiant Renegade, with the latter also noting that the show's production costs are still likely to soar. Although the show was staggeringly expensive, it is one of the cheapest Star Wars production made in the UK. In comparison, the Acolyte costs are nearly three times lower than the sum spent on 2015 Star Wars The Force Awakens. That was a movie. You're talking about a show versus a movie, which makes direct money back at the box office. And all the issues you can say about The Force Awakens, it made a lot of money. The Acolyte did not. The Acolyte's intention or purpose is to get people to sign up to Disney+, Plus, which it did not do, because if it did do, they would have had a season two. Unlike theatrical releases, which share ticket sales between studios and exhibitors, theaters, Disney receives all of the revenue from its streaming platform. Disney Plus subscribers pay a single fee, which grants them access to, yes, we know how streaming works. Uh, Regardless of the furor from fans, the Acolyte doesn't seem to have been a money spinner when it comes to merchandise. As our Forbes colleague Paul Tassi wrote, Disney has deleted all official Acolyte merchandise from its store, though he added that it also isn't available for certain other Star Wars streaming shows. Nevertheless, he pointed out that old links to specific items didn't just have sold out page, the listings were gone completely and returned error pages. Coupled with the cancellation of the second series, it caused some fans to fear that the Acolyte could be removed entirely from Disney Plus in order for Disney to get a tax write-off as Warner Brothers did by scrapping its largely complete Coyote versus Acme and Batgirl movies before they hit theaters. Uh, Disney's done this as well with Willow. I mean, that was a show that was on Disney Plus and it is no longer available. It is essentially, unless you have somehow acquired a copy of it, it is gone off the internet. They want to act like it never happened. The fans' worries have proved to be unfounded, and there is no suggestion that this will happen to the Acolyte. Some went as far as to say that it isn't even possible for a studio to get a tax write-off by pulling a production from the archive of streaming platform, but that is far from correct. All right, and they finish up here talking about tax rates on shows getting taken off streaming, which I don't really much care about. Uh, this article is confusing to me. Uh, I don't understand the point of the author because it's it's at the same time it's revealing that one of the main complaints about the Acolyte was that it cost so much money. And so even if this show was a good show and the audiences enjoyed this show, if it didn't bring people to Disney Plus to subscribe, why would you continue to do it? And so at $180 million, that was already a very expensive show. Now you're talking about it's over $230 million. And as they even said in the article, 
from Valiant Renegade, that cost is likely to go up. So this show, who knows how much show how much money this show costs? I mean, it very well could get close to three hundred million dollars for an eight episode TV series that I think each episode was like thirty minutes or something, 30, 45 minutes. It wasn't very long. I, I'm I'm just confused at the argument that they're making. So the show was not well received. The ratings were not very good. It didn't get people to sign up on Disney Plus. The, the reviews weren't good, but that means it's being review bombed because critics, some, not all apparently, because they had many numerous ones talking about how it had a lot of issues, some critics said it was good. So this is the first time in the history of television or streaming or anything where an audience didn't like something that critics do and vice versa. I, I'm tired of the argument of, of review bombing, this idea that fans are going out of the way to create brigades and let's all get together and review bomb this together and let's do all this. Like people live lives. They have things to do. And and like I've even seen some articles she didn't hear, but I've seen other articles accusing fans of basically setting up uh, these these bots to go out here and just leave review bombs and, and bad reviews. Uh, who has time to do these things like uh, studios do? People with lots of money and lots of free time do. When you're talking about most people, they just want to be entertained by a show. You're talking about Star Wars here. People want to watch a Star Wars show. They don't want to hear right off the bat when you're leading with diversity and inclusion and women this and men, even if it was pro-men, whatever it is. That's not what you want to hear out of a Star Wars movie. I personally, when I'm watching Star Wars, I don't even want any love story. I just want it to be about Star Wars. I love the fact that it was Darth Vader, good versus evil. I don't care about a love story one way or the other. And I think a lot of people feel that way. So when you're bringing in these other elements, that's not what people want. That's not what this audience wanted. And yes, this show had its audience, but it wasn't that big. And this show was made for that audience, which I think Disney thought was much bigger. So if you like the show, that's great. I have no ill will toward anybody that liked this show. But where I take objection to is if you don't like the show that means you're some sort of bad person and if you leave negative reviews about it well that just means you're review bombing this has been going on ever since the last jedi where lucasfilm and disney just cannot take an l they can't just basically admit to like oh the audience didn't like it but no we had to lash out at the audience if you didn't like this it means you're some sort of racist or you're a you're a misogynist or whatever it is and it's just tiresome at this point and at this point and obviously the show didn't make money it didn't do well because if it did disney would have renewed it for a season two even if it would have got bad reviews even if people were complaining online about it if the show made money they would have been like do a season two immediately and it seems the budget continues to go up so my guess is internally disney knows exactly how expensive this movie was and they're sitting there going we're not doing another one of these this did a didn't make any money it's losing us money and again you're talking about lucasfilm which is a complete disaster at this point you're talking about star wars which is a walking zombie of a franchise at this point and again we also heard that the ray movie may be delayed i'm very curious how the mandalorian and grogu movie is gonna do I just don't know. I, I really don't know how that movie will do. I think it's weird having a season four of a show become a movie and that that audience is going to go directly to movie theaters. Like it, it just seems like Lucasfilm and Star Wars is just in complete disarray. But either way, the Acolyte has at least cost $230 million, which was originally $180 million, which again is likely to be even more expensive once we find out even more filing. So either way, the Acolyte's not getting a season two. This show was not received well. It was insanely expensive. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I guess if it gets canceled off of Disney Plus, I'd be kind of surprised if it did, given uh, it's one thing for a Willow to get taken off of a streaming service. It's another thing for a Star Wars property to have that happen to. If that were to happen to this, uh, I think as much brand damage as Star Wars has had, that would even do more brand damage. And I just don't think lucasfilm or disney would do it probably for that reason alone but either way that is going to be it though for this video if you like this video please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of coverage here of theme parks and pop culture and let us know in the comments how much do you think the acolyte is going to end up costing after all of the costs are finally revealed and until next time we will see you later